to Booktopia TV. My name is Christopher Cahill and I'm honoured today to be joined by Jenny Bowen. Uh, Jenny is not only an author, but she's also the founder of the Half the Sky Foundation, uh, which is a charitable organisation which is dedicated to improving the, um, the living conditions and the education quality of uh, Chinese orphans. So Jenny, thank you thank very you much for being here today. Thank you. Um, for people who haven't read the book, um, uh, just get a bit of background on, on what led you into China to adopt uh, your first child, because essentially that's where it began for you, yes. um, and how you, you formulated the Half the Sky Foundation. So, um, uh, my husband and I were living in Los Angeles, uh, making, I was making uh, independent feature films as a director and also worked as a screenwriter for hire. He was a cameraman had a very comfortable, not particularly meaningful existence. And one morning we saw an article with a photograph. He's a photographer, so the photograph was what really stopped him in the New York Times. And it was a picture about, of a little girl who was dying. And she was uh, in a Chinese orphanage. And we learned for the first time that little girls were being abandoned in China simply because they were little girls. and, and but the conditions in the welfare institutions were very poor and a lot of kids were not surviving. We had the sort of, or I had, the sort of normal middle class reaction when you see something that just sort of stops you cold, we should send money. But then, who would we send it to? How would our money possibly help these children? And my husband, bless him, said we could bring him one home. Which in itself is, is making a massive difference. In, in a person's life. Yes, but as soon as he said it, I knew he was absolutely right that that was what we should be doing, that we, should, we could save one life. So we set out to save a life and really had no idea that we were changing our own lives and, and ultimately would change the lives of hundreds of thousands of children. Just no idea that that would happen. But, but by the time we got to China, uh, 18 months later, we met our little girl, Maya, who was like a poster child for everything that's wrong with institutionalizing children. She was, she, was, um, she was about two years old, we don't know exactly, but she was um, malnourished, she was full of parasites, she had amoebic dysentery, all of those things I could kind of deal with, but she, she, and, and she also couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, nothing, nothing. But, but the scary thing was that she was just emotionally vacant. And I think that for me, when I, when I started reading the book and I read that description um, of how she seemed, was heartbreaking to read, to, to think that a small child could have that level of abandonment or be subjected to that level of, of abandonment. And to I guess- just not be there. She was yeah. like a little shell. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I felt like I was such an experienced parent, and, and I, absolutely the moment I took that little girl into my arms, it, it was a combination of feelings of it was, this was somebody else's child, but at the same time, it's, this was absolutely my child. I mean, I felt this connection right away. Absolutely, she was mine, and yet, from all, for all my experience as a mother, I didn't know what to do with a child who didn't even know how to be touched who'd never been kissed, who'd never been spoken to. It's a very confronting situation. It really is, program. and you all of a sudden feel how inadequate you are, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I did what parents instinctively do, you know, what all parents do. You, you have a child you love and hug and hold and rock and play with, and, and, and that's what I did. And, and uh, took her home to California, I was in Los Angeles at the time, and, and I had a movie to edit because we had gotten the call to, to come to China while we were shooting what turned out to be my last film as a director. And uh, I couldn't leave until the shooting was finished, but I left the minute the principal photography was over. So when we got off the plane in Los Angeles, I had to go to work somehow cutting a movie with this fragile little shell of a child in my arms. And so I moved the editing room to my house and the team of editors and all the equipment, the bins and everything into my house, and sort of took over my house. And I sat there for six months with Maya on my lap or on the floor by me, 
uh, just holding her and playing with her and singing to her and, and just falling madly in love with her. Her first words were dialogue from my movie. What was the dialogue <laughs> from, from the movie? Because I didn't get a chance to ask. Tell what truth. Oh, Tell really? the truth. Tell the truth. It That's was a how you courtroom do. You scene. It in the book. Yes, yes. Uh, it was. It was actually a trial. A little girl who'd been sexually abused by her father, and uh, it actually. This was this was a film that I had written based on a, a court hearing that I had seen. The, uh, you know, I did so much research as a screenwriter, and I had witnessed a child um, uh, changing her testimony, saying that her father had done, been doing this thing, and, and then when, when confronted in a courtroom, I saw the little girl just not be able to, when confronted by her father, not be able to admit it. And, but tell the truth. And, yes, and that, that became the basis for this movie that I wrote, mm -hmm. which I had shot. And so, yeah, so that, those were her first words. So once, once Mia started to come into her own and to be a, a blossoming child, mm -hmm. What what made you stop and go? Well, okay. I should go to China. And I do should this go to thing. China, and yeah. I should, as an American, I should go and say, well, um, I want to help fix your orphanages across right. your entire vast country. Well, you know, I didn't even think. I don't even think I saw what was happening to Maya. I I, I mean, I saw she definitely started talking and and you know she started running around and and all those things, but it, it didn't really click in my head. I think. Until it was, it was a year later, a year from the adoption. The film was finished by then. Uh, we were having a, a party at our house to celebrate Maya's adoption day and my husband Richard's birthday because he we missed his birthday the year before because we flew to China on the fourth on the fourth of July, and his birthday is on the fifth. So when you fly from the U.S., you lose that day. And it was a fourth of July party, which is a celebration in the U.S. and our house was full of guests, and I was in the kitchen um, filling platters of food. And I looked at my kitchen window, and there's something about being a filmmaker. You spend all of your hours of your day when you're shooting a film looking at the world in a rectangle. Everything's a rectangle. And when you're editing a film, everything's a rectangle. And I think maybe it was the kitchen window, the framing of what I saw, that just all of a sudden it sunk in. I saw out the kitchen window my little girl romping around in the garden, playing with her friends, so full of joy and happiness, calling out, singing, laughing, giggling, falling down. And she looked like some, a child who had been cherished from day one. She'd always been loved. And it was like, boom. Boom, it was, it, you know, she was healed. She was this little butterfly. And I said to my husband, wow, that was really easy. We could do that for a few million children. Why don't children. we do it for all the kids we can't bring home? Yeah, it's and, a great idea, but obviously a very tough job. <laughs> I just felt something about that. It was, like, it was like one of those moments, I guess, you know, I guess it's an epiphany. I mean, I'm not a religious person, but it was like, you know, somebody's talking to me. <laughs> the, the, all of a sudden, I felt like, of course. Why didn't I think of that before? This is so obvious. We must do this because the solution is so simple that all of these children who I knew by then, I knew I had done more research, you know, and, and I knew that there were many thousands of children that were languishing in the welfare institutions just like my little girl had done and I knew how to fix it. Cool. So I just didn't feel like I had a choice but I had, I had to do this thing. And what was, I guess, the first, the first step to getting very close towards Half the Sky? Because uh, I know you did about 18 months of just touring around and, and having a look at the different orphanages, but what was, the, what was the first big push into, the, well, this is going to happen, I'm going to be able to make a, a huge difference in Oh, this I business. knew it from day one. I knew yeah. it from when I looked through the window. I knew it was going to happen. I absolutely knew right away. And I went into movie mode. Because that's all I knew. I had, I had no qualifications to be doing this. You know, I, 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 I didn't speak Chinese. I'd only been to China once, and that was to adopt. I had never run a nonprofit organization on the other side of the world with bureaucrats in a culture that I didn't understand and all those things. 
So the only skills I had were, I was a storyteller. I, I knew how to start with a blank piece of paper. I knew how to imagine a world that didn't exist. I mean, that's what movies are. Um, I could imagine the happy ending that I wanted to see. I didn't have a clue how I was going to get there, but think about it. I mean, that's what writers do. Hmm. You, if, if, you knew, if you knew every, every sentence in the book, you know, you, 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 there would be no need to write it. You know, be, it, 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 part of it is the journey of getting to where you want to go. And I wasn't afraid of a blank piece of paper. And I couldn't wait to get started to make to make that movie happen. So I just feel like I've been in production for <laughs> 16 years. That's just a short production. <laughs> just a short one. And, and we're not at the end yet, but I, I'll know it. I'll recognize it when it happens. Yeah. Just wanted so, to very quickly touch on the title. Uh huh. Uh, Wish you happy yes. forever because it's a very it's a lovely story in the book. Mm -hmm. If you can. Yes, uh, it's a beautiful. Letter I receive. I often receive letters from the children who are in the programs, and this this one was from a little girl, a twelve-year-old girl, and she said, "Dear lady, I do not know your name, and I am sorry to that. But I promise you, if if I do if I do know it, I will never forget it." And she was in our programs, and she talked about how she was going to work hard to uh, make make what I did worthy. And I just, and she signed it that way. She said, wish you happy forever. And I thought, well, isn't that what I wish for all of them? You know, mm. that's just so perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's a perfect title for the book as well. Yes, yeah. Um, thank you so much for taking time <laughs> out to have a chat to us here at Booktopia. Thank for being you. here today. Thank you, my um, pleasure. It's an amazing read and very touching and very heartfelt. So I feel privileged just to have read it. Um, Thank you so much. You can get Jenny's book at booktopia.com.